I hope you realize how spoiled we all are. Electric power is all around us. We use it to dry our hair. It does a bunch of other things too, but it wasn't always that way. There was once a time when one of the only ways to run machinery was if that machinery was near a river, and then you'd have to take that water for a spin. Of course, there's nothing more idyllic than the sound of rushing water and the look of an old water wheel gently moving with the current. The Henry Ford's chief curator, Mark Gruther, showed me their classic water wheel in Greenfield Village and explained the significance of this relic in the development of today's modern hydropower. For how long have water wheels been turning? Thousands of years. It's not exactly certain who the first person was to think that water would be a good way of driving machinery, but definitely a couple thousand years old. The Romans, the Greeks were using water wheels. And what did they use them for? Um, yeah. The primary reason was for grinding corn, grinding wheat, but also sometimes for irrigation, for moving water around as well. Are there different kinds of water wheels? Oh, definitely, and a lot of that depends on what the water power site is that you're working with. If you've got a sort of high fall, there's an overshot wheel, which is the most efficient way of using water power. Which means that you got the wheel and the water coming, coming in over, over the, the top, top and going down. Well, you're that sounds powerful. It is, when you're essentially using gravitational energy. In fact, there are three kinds of vertical water wheels. The overshot, the breast shot, which is water hitting the wheel near its axis point, and the undershot. An undershot, so you've got the wheel here and the water's flowing under it. Exactly, and the wheel we've got here is closest to an undershot wheel. And how powerful is that? It really just depends what you're trying to drive. It can be quite efficient. And if you want it to be really powerful, I guess it also depends how quickly the water is flowing. That's part of it. I think the other part of it, and it's what makes water power a tricky thing, is the degree to which you might want to control it. Controlling water means building dams, canals, and ponds, or a penstock like the one we're standing by. Mark let me do the honors of opening the floodgate to get a current flowing to push on the wheel and get it rotating. I want that thing to spin so fast it's just a blur. Using my sheer brawn, I just lowered Greenfield Village's electricity belt. When the water wheel rotates, it gives mechanical power to the gears and axles of any kind of mechanism, such as a grist mill for grinding corn and wheat. It was only a matter of time before innovative thinking and tinkering elevated the status of this ancient concept. When is the first hydropower plant? The first one that's generally recognized in the United States is 1882 in Appleton, Wisconsin. That's when a fairly modest Edison uh, generating station is applied to a water power. Today, hydropower accounts for 6% of the U.S.'s total electricity generation. And these vertical wooden water wheels have given way to large horizontal metal turbines that spin more times per minute than wooden ones did in a day. Now that's innovation. And I have to say, standing here, it's lovely, but this is also making me dizzy, and I'm afraid I'm going to fall into the water. Yeah, you're just yeah. going to mess up the mill terribly. <laughs> you can't have that. I would hate, I'd hate to gum up the works. Mm -hmm.